So do that. Um, just, Veronica, thanks for coming today. Um, this is our first session with the Office of Student Success. Uh, so we appreciate them for coming. Um, I will hand this over here in a little bit. Um, please stay around till the end of the session. Um, there will be a survey for you to take at the end. Um, that helps me know how to improve this in the future, but it is also your way to enter to win that uh, scholarship. Um, so if you attend three sessions, we'll use that, that same survey for every session this week, as long as you attend three unique sessions and submit those, that does enter you to win that $500 scholarship. Um, so please hang out until the end of the session. Um, ladies, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're going to go through some information and then let her have some Q&A time. That sound okay? Yeah, definitely. We love questions. Hopefully we answer quite a bit of that, but I feel like there's always stuff that we forget or just really good questions people come up with. So yeah. don't hesitate and feel free to pop in if there's stuff in the in-between. We're, we're pretty relaxed about that. And if you feel more comfortable with the chat function, that should be available as well. Whatever you feel most comfortable with Veronica, but please don't be shy. This is all for you. Um, so I will stop my share and let you guys take it over. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Um, so like Jenna talked about, we're the Office of Student Success. Um, and so I'll introduce myself and then Debbie can cover her stuff. Um, but my name is Chelsea Dye. I am the success coach for the College of Health Professions. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about success coaching a little bit later in the presentation. Um, but my role as success coaching with CHP is specifically for the College of Health Professions students um, and really focusing on the needs um, that they need when it comes to academic success. Yeah, and I'm Debbie Aslam, and I'm the success coach for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So I work with the students that have majors that are within that college and um, focus on, I think, a lot more broad things with the students that, that I work with in that college. Definitely. So um, with student success, I think the, the easiest way that I try to explain it is that we're kind of like this overarching umbrella. And so while student success is um, pretty big in its role across campus, we have departments underneath us that do a whole bunch of other stuff. And so um, they're all geared towards student success, but that success differs a little bit. And so we wanted to break down each of those departments for you so that you know where the resource is, what resources and services they offer. Um, and then um, we are also going to share, um, share our screens and kind of give you some information about where things are located on the website, um, just so that you feel a little bit more comfortable with that and, and knowing where to access some of those resources. So um, with all things student success, one of the things that happens first is first year programs. Um, and so first year programs is for any and every student that comes through the university um, as a student. So I went through an orientation program, um, whenever I was a student, Debbie and I also, and Jenna have also gone through orientation programs as adults. And so um, working in this job. And so with that, first year programs is like your orientation and entry into the university. And that's for first year students, um, students coming straight out of high school, but that's also for transfer students and returning adult students. Um, and so I really quickly am going to share my screen so that y'all can see their web page. Um, and I'm going to highlight a couple of things with first year programs. So first year programs, they have a really awesome staff. And so you guys should take every opportunity um, within that office. But first year programs is our orientation office. Um, and so if you need to go through and sign up for orientation, um, all students go through it. Um, and so it's pretty easy to kind of walk through and it walks through the steps. So if you go through to sign up for orientation, then it gives you some information about um, how to um, RSVP for it, what orientation does, why you go through orientation. 
Um, and then you can browse sample agendas so that you kind of know what to expect with the orientation program. Um, I know that things have been pretty different with everything COVID has kind of thrown at us. Um, and so with orientation now, there is um, an online component that you do, but there's also new student kickoff days um, that you can come to on campus. And so you can find all of this information um, down here about how to RSVP, the virtual sessions, um, and then in-person new student kickoff days. You can see kind of everything and RSVP for those down here. Um, there's all of these additional programs that you can go to. Let's see. And then there's also information here. So if you wanna look at whether you're an incoming freshman, you guys would be transfer and adult learners. There's more information um, based on that. And so there's a ton of things to look at through here. Um, besides orientation, part of the, my favorite things about first year programs, um, there are a couple of programs that they do throughout the year. So it's not just your orientation program from you know, the, the week or two before classes start, it's going to be throughout your whole entire first year. And so you have transition mentors who are just there and available to help you through your first um, semester and first year. They will reach out every once in a while. If you've got questions, they're a great resource to reach out to. Um, also, they do things. So we have um, syllabus party um, that's put on by first year programs. And that's a really great start to the semester where you can kind of get some help in um, really organizing your life throughout that first semester. And so that's taking all of your syllabi from all of your classes um, and creating an organized organized kind of um, setup for you to really succeed throughout the semester. Um, another thing that people really love um, is Clash of the Colleges. And so if you've never heard of Clash of the Colleges, even if you're a transfer student or a returning adult student, there's a lot that you can do with Clash of the Colleges. Um, it's the world's greatest, coolest field day. Um, if you remember field day from um, like elementary school, um, every time I say that, people are all like, oh, yes, definitely understand. Um, and the deans of the colleges get into it. And so there's really big bragging rights that go about it. And so there's some physical games that you can do um, that's very field day kind of thing. But then there's also virtual options, things that you can be involved in within your academic college. Um, and all of those things go towards um, earning points. And so there's a lot of bragging rights that are on the line with that. Um, and so it's a great way to be involved with your academic college, um, make friends, get to know people, um, and really be a part of Wichita State. Um, they also do things like academic convocation. If you go into the in this section portion, you can see things about Clash of the Colleges, academic convocation, um, the WSU Reads program with first year seminar. So there's a whole bunch of information here that I would highly suggest looking through. Um, and then eventually, if you want to try to be an, a transition mentor, um, I have only heard good things and it's a it's a paying job on campus. And it also lets you really get to know a whole bunch of people um, and welcome people to the university, which is awesome. So that is first year programs. Um, the other um, office or department underneath us that I wanted to um, highlight before I turn it over to Debbie is the Office for Student Money Management. Um, and the acronym there is AWESOME. So O-S-S-M, or sorry, O-S-M-M um, helps if I get the acronym right. Um, and so I'm gonna share my screen again. And this is Awesome's webpage. And so the Office for Student Money Management, we always say that they don't take any money, they don't give any money. So they're not financial aid, and they're not financial operations, um, but really it's free finance education. Um, as someone who is paying back my own student loans from grad school, um, I am a real fan of Awesome because um, personal finance and, and just financial literacy it's not something that we're born with. It's something you definitely have to learn. Um, and so you can schedule individual appointments with our awesome staff. Um, if you wanna go through and talk about budgeting, if you wanna figure out um, how to create a savings plan and what that kind of looks like, if you 
want to figure out a plan for paying off student loans or paying on your loans while you're in college. All of these things can be discussed in an individual appointment um, with one of our members on our team. Um, and they have, they are really well trained. They're great, knowledgeable about all of um, financial wellness and money management. Um, in the spring semester, we always highlight that Awesome helps with um, filing your taxes. So if you need help filing your taxes, they won't do it for you. Um, I always try to make that clear. It's not something you can drop off and, and get done for you, but they do have the software. They're also trained on the software and how to answer questions that you might have. Um, and so you can set up an individual appointment, go and meet with them um, and help file your taxes. And then and they're available as you have questions through that filing process. Um, and again, all of this is completely free. So that's another perk with student success is that none of these things um, with financial wellness are going to cost. All you have to do is set up an appointment um, and meet with one of our staff members. Um, another thing that comes through awesome um, is my college money plan. And so this is actually my profile that I made. If you go to mycollegemoneyplan.org, you can create your free profile. Um, and with that profile, you have access to a whole lot of stuff that um, will just help you with financial literacy. Um, and so this is something that was created through, um, uh, it was grant funded whenever it first started. And then we've made it accessible to people at Wichita State, but also anybody across the United States. Um, I know that it's used by some high school teachers, that it's used um, by individuals in um, community college or tech colleges. Anybody can use this. So you don't have to be a Wichita State student to be able to have a free profile with this. Um, and so there's a lot that you can do with it. There's all of this educational kinds of things about opportunities, understanding costs, um, a lot of the things I tell people are like finding ways to pay for school, um, building, building your financial plan. And so this is something that a student can use. It's something that a parent or a guardian can use to help you figure out how to pay for college. Um, there's just a lot of free resources on here. There's even stuff about your credit score and identity theft. Um, I always flip over to financial planning worksheet because I think that it's just a huge resource. And so this financial plan, um, you can kind of break down what are the costs of the university that I'm going to attend with attending Wichita State. You should be able to find um, all of these on our website when it comes to tuition and fees um, and then books and supplies. It even takes into account some of the things that you might not think about as costs in college. Um, but then it's also going to help you figure out how are we going to pay for this. And so we're looking at loans, federal loans, work study, scholarships, all of that kind of stuff. And so then you total up your costs, you're looking at how much money you have available and how you're paying for it. And so it's just there to help you try and make um, good, healthy money decisions, um, which I know isn't the most fun thing to talk about and work through, um, but it really can help you in the long run. Um, and so again, that's 100% free. You can go in, it's really easy to make a profile. Um, and then you can access that whenever you need it. So those are two of our offices. Um, and I think Debbie's gonna take over for the Shocker Learning Center. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you, uh, as Chelsea just explained, we're kind of a big umbrella and there's, there's several different offices. They're very different in what they do, but we all kind of work together at the same time. Um, and another, piece of underneath the umbrella is the Shocker Learning Center. And the Shocker Learning Center uh, covers two main things. And then I'm going to share a, a third thing that they do. Uh, they do supplemental instruction and tutoring. And sometimes people get these two confused. And so supplemental instruction involves peers, so students that are upperclassmen, students that have taken uh, the class that the supplemental instruction is overseeing and has done success, were successful in that class. Um, and then they are 
attached to, to that class. That's how I want to describe it. So um, say it's general biology one, and this is a class that has been determined that is difficult for a lot of students. So they determined to have a, a supplemental instructor or an SI leader over that class. This is, these are paid positions. The student is hired to um, be in the class. They attend the class, they take notes, they participate at, in that manner. And then they have what they call SI sessions or different time frames than the class itself where they, the SI leader meets with the students in the class and helps show them study techniques on how to best handle this class, how they maneuvered the class when they were a student. They don't re-lecture. Um, they don't give students notes. They don't you know, um, help with assigned homework, but they show these are the steps that I took when I was a student to be successful in this class. These are the things I'd recommend you look at um, and so they have these sessions and so that's a, a supplemental instruction and they are uh, assigned to traditionally difficult classes classes that students typically have a hard time with you can determine whether your class has um, si through your blackboard or i'm going to share my screen um, here let's see you can go to the Shocker Learning Center and they have tutoring, study tips, and supplemental instruction. If you click on supplemental instruction and scroll down just a little bit, there's this thing right here that says view a list of SI courses. Um, and then it just gives you the list. And what you'll notice, so say I mentioned biology, general biology one. Um, oh, that was not the one I wanted to try. Let's try. Here, okay, general biology two, it has two different CRNs. A CRN is a number associated with the specific class. You may have um, seven general biology two classes being taught this coming semester, and each one of those are biology 211, but then they also have a CRN number, which identifies them as that's the one that meets on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. or whatever. It, it's that separation of what it is. So this is where you can find what um, classes have SI. And there has been research done that shows that if you attend six or more sessions of SI, it increases your, G, uh, your grade for that course by at least a half of a letter grade. So there is definite benefits for utilizing um, SI. And SI is, um, is an international program. It's uh, a pretty well-known thing, but at the same time, it is um, in the state of Kansas, at least, WSU is kind of like the leader in, in how they manage their SI and how SI is, is done. We, we are we are, are the ones that everybody seems to try and follow. So, so we have a really good program here um, with the SI at WSU. Now, so that's SI. Then you have tutoring, which is different. Tutoring is one-on-one -on -one sessions. Say you want to have um, uh, just a sit, sit down one-on-one -on -one session with a tutor. You can have that. If your course has SI, they're going to say go to SI first. <laughs> um, but a lot, not, not, I mean, you saw that not all courses have SI. Uh, it's really just those that are traditionally known as, as difficult and, and, and the professor agrees with it and they decide that this is what is going to happen. So you have a class that doesn't have SI. You can request a tutor, and I'm going to have Chelsea. I'm going to unstop sharing mine and Chelsea's going to sh share hers because she's going to help us see the steps of how to request a tutor. Because it's really simple, but it's 
best to walk you through it as well. Um, Happy so I oh, sorry. Yeah. I have those screenshots, but at first I wanted to let them know um, that if you just go to wichita.edu slash tutoring, um, then you can go in, so wichita.edu slash tutoring. Helps if I spell it correctly. <laughs> then it pops you to this first page. And then if you want step-by-step -step instructions to request a tutor, we found here, which is the page that I was on. And so it gives you some information about that before, but then there are also these step-by-step -step instructions. Debbie and I were able to go through and get screenshots. And so we'll show you the screenshots of what it would look like to do it. But I did want you to also know, um, and I'll put it in the chat um, that if you, later on need those step-by-step -step instructions that they're available online as well. So yeah, and the nice. other thing I would say real quick before we go by to the step-by-step -step is that um, right now they are doing both through Zoom remote as well as in person at the Shocker Learning Center, which is a physical location in the first floor of uh, Linquist Hall. So, um, you can choose either one of those. So the first thing you do is you log into your, your MyWSU. And then um, there is a link under student tools, the student tool section called request a tutor. And you'll click on that. And I think you're now at the next step. Is that right? Yeah, I was gonna try and show my MyWSU really quick so that they would know where it's at. Oh yeah, you have the ability to do that. Because you're a student as well. So you have yeah. a student. Okay. Yeah, I don't have that, so I don't get to do that. Perks of being a grad student as well. Um, and so don't pay attention to these two tabs. As a student, you wouldn't have those. Um, if you're on your home screen and you scroll down here to the student tools section, then that's where you can schedule an advising appointment or get request a tutor here. And so if you picked request a tutor, it'll take you to another screen. If I request a tutor, it will not take me to the same screen, which is why we have the, um, the screenshots. So I will move back to that. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Now I think we are sharing what it would look like if you hit that request a tutor. Now you're good to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, um, Click on that. See the the yellow box that is or the yellow square. Yes, there it says request a tutor. So you're going to click on that um, to request a tutor, and then it gets you to the request a tutor. Why does it double? Do you know? Click on the um, bar. It, it says request a tutor, and then yeah, select yeah, it, request a tutor. Doubles because just like so, if you wanted to set up an advising appointment. That's what this side of things does. Um, and so you don't want to touch this new appointment. That's for requesting an appointment with your advisor. But when you request a tutor, it goes down here. And so what type of service would you like tutoring? And then what type of appointment do you want tutoring? It's just, you have to fill both of those in because it's different if you were, or if you were wanting to schedule with an academic advisor. And gotcha. so- for the system to work, you just put tutoring in twice, um, and then you can go to find available times. Right. So where do you, because I'm learning this, just FYI folks, I'm learning as well, since this is not really how I've seen it. Um, how do they request a specific topic? Like, so that yeah. you request a tutor, do you put it in that box there that yeah, so once you go through and you hit tutoring and then tutoring again, you'd find available times. And so then what pops up, and we kind of cut this off because we used a student's um, profile in order to get these. And so what happens is once you do that, then a blue box will come up and it will have all of your classes listed out. And that's what's in that blue box. And so it says, please select one of the courses below. And so for this one, we chose um, Fundamentals of Business Application Development. Honestly, I have no idea what that class is, um, but it would be this list of the students' classes that they're taking. And so you would just select whichever one. Um, and then 
click on request a time again. So it would pop up like this. You're looking for tutoring. You want an individual tutoring appointment for fundamentals of business application development. And then you request a time and there should only be one location because it's always gonna be through the Shocker Learning Center. Um, and so once you request that time, then this will pop up. So step six, and in that, all of this stuff is already pre-populated from everything that you already did. So then you're just gonna put your available, availability down here. And I will tell everybody, I would try and be um, as open with my times as I could be, because then they're gonna look at the schedule and try and match you with a tutor um, and get that set up for you. And so try to put in like bigger chunks of time that you're free. So maybe it's like Monday afternoons, I can be free during that time. Um, if you maybe have less availability, put in the chunks of times that you can be available, but then you might also say, here's my contact information, reach out and let me know. Um, especially if you, I, I know a lot of students are juggling quite a bit. And so you might um, put that in there as well. And then you would hit request. And then that request goes to um, the Shocker Learning Center staff and they work on matching you together with your tutor. Um, and so you have requested that appointment, everything is good to go, it's been submitted. Um, usually you hear back within I think 48 hours. Um, so that's why also with supplemental instruction, we always encourage people um, to talk with your SI leader if you have an SI in your class, um, because a lot of times if you can't make it to those study sessions, there are three hours of study sessions um, that they hold outside of your class period that you can drop into. Um, you're not required to go, but I would highly encourage it. Um, if you can't make it to any of those three sessions, you can also talk to your SI leader about office hours. They hold two office hours outside of that. Um, and a lot of times they, it's kind of like drop-in tutoring at that point. There's not a lot of people who go um, and drop in during office hours. And so you could get some pretty individualized care there. Um, and then if you can't even make those, be open and talk with your SI leader um, because they have an ability to kind of work with your schedule. Um, like Debbie had talked about, a lot of times they'll serve as a tutor. Um, and so talk with them to see what's available. Don't just take it as, oh, I can't make those, so I can't use that resource. That resource is really flexible. They're really wonderfully trained students who have gone through it before. Um, the other thing that I highlight is that if you were to go through individual tutoring, it takes time to get set up with a tutor. It takes time for you and that tutor to meet and figure out where you're at in that class. Sometimes that can't be helped, but if you have an SI leader, they should know where you're at content-wise in your class. And so to have somebody who already knows what content you're going through as well, that can really speed up the help that you're getting. Um, and so I highly, highly suggest talking to your SI leader if you have one. If you don't, we can get you through and get you a tutor. Um, it just takes a little bit of time. So I would also suggest requesting a tutor um, whenever you first feel like you're starting to struggle. Um, don't wait until like midterms um, and you feel like you've kind of dug yourself a hole because it's gonna take a little bit of time to get you connected to your tutor. Um, and so request, if you don't um, have an SI leader, definitely go in and just follow these steps um, and request a tutor. Yeah. yeah. Um, one more question, because I'm learning the whole process of how to how to request one. If they were specific, specifying that they want remote versus in person or vice versa, was there they just put that in the note? I put that in my availability. Yeah. I don't think that there was another spot to put that, um, but I would put in my availability. And I think that's another thing that if I think that's another thing that COVID has shown us is like sometimes things aren't as accessible whenever we have to travel to campus. And so having um, the writing center, um, the math lab and some of our other resources online and available through Zoom um, has really helped people kind of fit things into their schedule a little bit better. And so um, I would just put in my availability, remote appointment um, preference or like something along those lines. Um, and then see where you can kind of go from there. The Sharper Learning Center staff is really great about um, just 
kind of conversing with you and going back and forth. And so if you ever have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to them um, for clarification on some stuff. Yeah, and Chelsea mentioned this already, but um, I wanted to reemphasize just for your feeling confident in what you're getting into when it comes to tutoring. Our tutoring center is, uh, they, they do CRLA certification, which um, is a whole process of training that these students have to go to, through to become level one or level two certified. Um, uh, skills that not just, it's not just about content and knowledge of content, it's about how to best tutor you, how be best to work with you um, as a student and, and a lot of really good quality skills to get there. So um, know that they're very well trained in, and know what they're doing. They, they've been very well trained. So, um, so SI is one of the things that Chakra Learning Center does. Tutoring is one thing that Chakra Learning Center does. And the last thing I wanted to, to touch on, a lot of people don't really know much about, uh, is the LASI, which is a learning assessment tool that you have access to if you would like to um, take this. It's, it's I think it's 60 questions. And what it does is it, it assesses your strengths and your weaknesses in regards to how you learn and how you study and how you can better learn and better study. So it's, it's really a good tool to help you improve as a student um, based on this information. There's uh, 10 different things that it looks at, including time management. And I mean, actually I have it in front of me. Let's see, it covers things like test strategies and time management and um, motivation and concentration and, and several other things that, that it, it gives you kind of a score on based on how you do this. Um, and so consider utilizing that. If you wanna know what you're learning and, and study strategies and, and how you can better improve that, um, contact this Chakra Learning Center and they can help get you set up to take that. I think I've never taken it, but I think it would be really cool to, to look at and, and see that as a added tool in your toolbox as you navigate being a student. So um, that's kind of what the Shocker Learning Center does as a whole. And then the last thing that we underneath that umbrella is us, the success coaches and what we do. And we've been talking to you about all these other things, but really haven't talked about what we do yet. So I think that's kind of our next step is to talk to you about what coaching is and, and what we do. So um, as success coaches, we meet with a large variety of students in our colleges, um, helping them with some of those things that I just mentioned uh, on the, the last E, helping them with figuring out how to better manage their time and how to um, utilize better study strategies to help them be more effective in their schoolwork, finding motivation when they're feeling like I just really don't want to do this or dealing with um, test prep and how to prepare for tests or how to manage test anxiety as you are like so nervous about the tests that are coming up. Um, and, and really, I think a thing that I find myself doing a lot of is just encouraging and being an accountability partner with students in that they meet with me so that they know, oh yeah, I have to meet with my success coach every two weeks. I better make sure that I've done everything so I can tell her how great everything is going because I don't want to say that things are not going well. And, and with a lot of students, that seems to be a real um, benefit to, to how they manage their, their coursework and their, class, their classes. So um, as far as like, how we get connected with students. Um, I, we have what we call campaigns, which we kind of utilize different things to create a group of students that we reach out to. 
I always say it's kind of random, but it's not random, but it is random. And, and we're reaching out to them just to say, hey, how you doing? Hope your semester's going well. Is there anything I can help you with? Um, and so there's some of those, and we, we're, we do several of those every semester. Then we also will sometimes get referrals. Um, referrals are from a lot of time faculty or your advisor or staff members or other people that say, hey, can you check on John? I'm just, you know, concerned about him. Will you see if you could offer him some extra help in the classroom because he seems to be str struggling in my class. And so we reach out to students in that way as well. And then I guess the third way that we reach out to students is um, orientation. We talked about orientation early at the beginning of, of this presentation, Chelsea did, and what orientation is. And one of the things that um, students will come across, particularly freshmen in orientation, is a, a success plan that they have to create. So basically it's a survey with several different questions about how they study and um, what their plans are as far as how often they're gonna work, how many hours they're gonna work this semester and um, basic stuff about themselves. And then at the end, it encourages them to uh, um, come up with a couple of goals, a couple of goals and then some steps on how to achieve those goals. And, and so we'll meet with those students and talk to them about their success plans and kind of help them come up with some ideas on how to better reach the goals that they want to reach. And so those are kind of the three ways that I see us meeting with students quite a bit. Um, students can reach out to us. You don't have to wait for us to knock on your door. Um, not that we knock on doors, send you an email. You don't have to wait for that. You can um, reach out to us. I know that I saw it um, in the screen share that Chelsea, and I don't know if you remember seeing it, but right below request a tutor, it said something about scheduling with a success coach. So that was an option on that, that page. So you can, through my, my WSU, you can schedule with us and we'd be happy to meet with you. So, and I'm sure Chelsea might have some things that I forgot to mention as far as what we do. I, Oh, no. There's so many things that we do and, and they're all kind of a little bit different depending on the student. Um, and Debbie went over a lot of the things. So um, for the majority of students, it's completely um, up to you individually if you want to come and see a success coach. There are a couple of times, um, like Debbie talked about, that we'll work on things like success plans um, and that some students are required to come and see us, but for the most part, um, it's it's completely by your choice. And so um, I always tell my students, I'm here from the time that you start at the university to the time that you graduate. So I have some students who we meet at orientation and they are just nervous about that first semester. They're nervous about starting and getting into the university. Um, it's just a little bit overwhelming. And so we can kind of talk and maybe that's a one-time thing. Um, other times I have been working with some of my students who are in their last semester and getting, getting ready to graduate. Sometimes they need help with a little bit of that motivation. Senioritis is a thing. Um, and so sometimes we'll see students one time and sometimes we'll see students once a month, once every two weeks, once a week. It's again, totally up to the student and we let you guys um, kind of decide what level of support you need. Um, we'll do some outreach. Again, it's not required. I would love it if you would respond um, and let me know that you're doing well. Um, the only other thing that I um, remind students about is that if you don't know where to go for a resource or if you have a problem or you want to work on something, but you don't know where to go, your success coach is always a good place to start. Um, if we're not able to um, help you with whatever issue is going on. We do have really good relationships um, across the campus. And so we're able to send you and refer you to somebody on campus. Um, and so I know that there are a billion and one resources on campus. And so if you're ever unsure of where to go, how to get connected to something, um, one, you'll have Jenna, she's incredible. Um, but you also have a success coach as part of your success team. And so 
if you ever have trouble with study skills, student success, academic success kinds of stuff, reach out to your success coach. You need to find a place on campus for a certain resource. Um, don't hesitate to reach out as well. And so I think we've got time for a couple of questions. If anybody has those, Veronica, Jenna, you can also throw in if you <laughs> if we missed anything because you're pretty knowledgeable on our resources as well. I think you guys did amazing. Thank you so much for presenting and again taking the first session. I appreciate that. Um, Veronica, oh, that's perfect. Um, if just in case you guys can't see that, she said no questions. Thank you for all the resource info. Perfect. Yes. Um, Veronica, I just put the uh, Qualtrics or survey in the chat. Um, if Go ahead and fill that out. It's super short, helps us know how we did. Um, and it also will count you as present. Um, and again, if you do attend three sessions, one, you'll get entered to win a $500 scholarship, but everybody that attends three sessions will get a bag of Shocker Pathway gear. Nice. Um, so fill that out, it's super short. Um, and we'll just kind of hang out here um, for just a couple of minutes, that way you can fill that out. That way you don't lose the link. Um, we'll just hang out until about 9.50. And then, you know, and then as soon as you're done with that, if you want to jump off, that way we know you're good to go. Um, that would be super helpful for me. That way, I, you know, I don't make weird faces because I do that. Um, but again, thank you guys for presenting. I hope that it was a good exercise and good start to your week. Um, Definitely a good start to the week. And man, I, as a student myself, a $500 scholarship. Yes, 